Okay, hi everybody. My name is David Turner. That's my name right there. This is the first video that I'm recording for this class that I am teaching in the fall, but I'm also teaching it in the summer. I'm getting, letting students get a head start on the course. Uh, and they can finish it early if they want. But uh, I want to keep things moving along through the summer, so hopefully I'll get a lot of people doing this work in the summer. And then in the fall, this video will be ready and people can watch this in the fall as well. So uh, this is, of course, um, 4050. It's Web Application Development. That's the name of the class. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do in this uh, video is to um, show you how to do this first assignment, the Git assignment. So here's the assignment. We're going to create a remote Git repository on GitHub. I'm going to show you that. And you can make the repository public or you can make it private. Now, if you make it private, you've got to add me as a collaborator so I can see your work when you submit it to me. So that's my GitHub ID, CSUSBDT. Use that to share with me, but only if you make it private. If you make it public, then uh, that I won't have, then you won't have to go through that step. And I like it public, and it's, it's easier for me if it's public. But you can make it private if you like. And uh, then once you make that repository, you create a web page, any content you like, put it in a file named index.html, and there it is. And then in your next progress report. You send me a link. I need a link to your repository in the next progress report. And I call it a remote repository because it's um, it's like it's cloud storage, right? And it's a remote. So a repository is, is where a programmers store their source code and, uh, and other project artifacts as well, images and so on. And uh, and it, the in Git. The repositories are local in general, and uh, you'll have a local repository on your desktop. Or if you have multiple computers that you use, you'll have uh, repositories on each one if you if you work on these problems in, in more than one computer. But then you ha have uh, you can merge repositories, so you you blend them together, you merge their data. And uh, so what GitHub provides is a, is a like cloud storage for a remote repository. So if you do stuff locally and you store things in your local repository, then you, you synchronize what you've changed. You synchronize your local repository with your remote repository. It's the remote repository that I'm going to access. I won't be able to see what's in your file system on your local machine, I could, but I can see what you... Uh, what you push into, and that's the verb they use, push. I can see the work that you push from your local repository into your remote repository. So let's go ahead and do this. This is GitHub. And uh, try to keep this... Anyway, this is uh, this says GitHub. That's me up there. So I'm going to create a repository. Now you'll need a, an account, obviously. I'm skipping a step. You've got to create an account. And um, so I'm going to create a new repository. And let me call it something like uh, CSC4050. Okay, that's available. I'm going to delete this when I'm done, by the way. But for you, you'll create your repository. You name it whatever you like. And then uh, you could put in a description in there. I'll say it's my temp, uh, temp repo for demonstration. And here's where you decide whether it's public or private. I'm going to leave mine public. And this is useful here. If you add a readme file, this is good. Uh, there's also this git ignore is, and license are also important, but skip that for now. You should check uh, at least one of these so that you can uh, you can basically uh, clone the repository if you put something in there. So I'm going to create the repository. And uh, there it is. So you'll see the link up here. This is github.com slash, that's my GitHub username, slash, and that's the name of the project, or the name of the remote repository, CSC 4050. So I'm going to make a, 
I'm gonna now. So that's a that repository now exists, and there's this, see there's an initial commit. This is the file readme.md. MD is the file extension for Markdown files. So Markdown is uh, like HTML. It's a markup language that programmers like to use, and also bloggers. It's good for blogging as well. So. But we check that checkbox to create this file automatically for us. You can edit it here directly through the interface, but you know, and that's okay if that's convenient for you. So that's up to you how you do it. But now I'm going to uh, use the sort of the classic approach, which is to do everything from the command line. And that's a that's an approach where you can work around that and get through this class without working at the command line. It's uh, for your own benefit. You probably want to learn how to interact with Git from the command line. That's the that's how the standard way that people do it, and um, it, you get more abilities that way. So I'm going to click on this link, and you see there's different protocols that you can use. Look at this. Okay, I never saw this one before. Isn't that interesting? GH repo clone. I could try that, but normally I use this one here. And uh, there's other, by the way, GitHub is just one service. There's other service providers. There's other remote Git repository service providers like Bitbucket. Uh, and there's a bunch of them. Heroku uses Git when you, when you, uh, deploy um, a web application to uh, Heroku. You, you basically do it using a, a, a Git repository. So Git is used all over the place. GitHub is not Git. That's their, GitHub is just a company. They're the biggest company. It's owned by Microsoft. They bought it, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And, um, and it's, uh, it's free, although you can pay for certain things. So this uh, this approach here wouldn't work with uh, with like Bitbucket and and other uh, other remote repositories, but this SSH accessing your remote repository over SSH this will, this would be more standard. So it would in, this would uh, work with other other um, repository providers other than GitHub. I'm going to have to make a copy of that. And uh, so let's see here. I will, um, oh yeah, you need to install Git, right? So I'll show you where that is. Let me see, it's a, I'm just gonna say Git. Let's see where it sends me. Download, this is git-scm.com, that's the one. This is it right here. This is Windows, you know, they have Mac, they have Linux. You can download this and install it. So that has to be done. I've already done that. So I already have Git running locally here. And one of the things you get out of it is uh, you get a um, command line interface. And um, so I'm going to open that up here. I'm going to run git bash here. Now I'm on my desktop. See the tilde, that means it's in my home directory. So these are... These are Unix commands. So PWD, print working directory. So I'm in the C drive, users folder. And the name of the user is CSUSB. I wanted to change that name, that was a mistake. And I, Windows 10 is so inflexible, it won't let me change the name somehow, I just can't figure it out. I spent a lot of time on that. So I'm just gonna keep that name. And then, uh, the uh, and under that user name is uh, my desktop. So I like to work on the desktop because then I can see stuff. See here, I don't like it to get too messy. So then I use the git commands git clone. So we're going to clone a remote repository, and that's not it. I uh, I made a mistake there. Not a mistake, but let me grab this again. Copy that. Paste it in there. See, this is the URL right there. And uh, you'll see in there that it's like, um, 
this is the like the protocol and this is the this is the host name on the internet internet host name not the ad symbol just the g like that that's the internet host name this is my account and this is the 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 git repository they usually end with dot git that's the file extension uh, so if you look here on my desktop ls4 that's a once again a unix or linux command and it shows that i have a repository where is it csc 4050 that got created by this command so i cd into that and uh, do an ls there's there's the readme all right we're going to cat the readme see there it is temp repo for demonstration all right let's go back to the code see it temp repo for demonstration that's the readme file and this is the nicely formatted version of it if you you want to view it in the raw form I think there's a, uh, I click on this here like that, see? And this is sort of the translated version that's neat, made neat. I could select raw here. And that, that's what the file contents look like. There's a uh, sharp sign, a pound sign, name of the repository, and so on. And so uh, that's it, see? That's the sharp sign there. And that line, it's just two lines in the folder, in the file right there. So let's do this now. Uh, I'm using, uh, you know what? Let me do it in a simple way. So we're going to go into, what is it here? This one. And uh, let's see if I can create a new file I'm going to call it a text document and um, I'll call it uh, index.html that's what the assignment uh, asks for you see the icon it shows it can be opened by a browser and Let's open that with, I've been using uh, VS Code. You know, it's just kind of complicated. It takes a while to learn it and get good with it. So that's, and I still don't know it all the way, but I have been using VS Code. It's, it's free from Microsoft. It's a kind of a general purpose uh, source code editor. It's not a full blown uh, IDE like Visual Studio or Xcode, but it's, um, it's halfway there. It's halfway to being an IDE. And it's very handy because you can use it. What it is is it's got sort of kind of like a pluggable architecture. So if you're using Python, you can add the Python plugin. You're using Lua, you use a Lua plugin, and this and that different plugins to um, to help out with what you're doing. Not just languages, but sometimes like um, a lint delinting program, which is I use. But I'm not going to show that. It's too complicated. So I'm just going to open it with uh, notepads here. And here's the file. And, you know, on the assignment, I'm going to, let's look at the assignment again here. The assignment says, uh, you know, oh, it doesn't say anything. <clears throat> oh, I remember now. I had it in, my, in the Discord server. Let me go there. And uh, where am I there? Oh, not that one. This one. No, this one. So, where is it? Assignment Git? Did I put it in there? No, General. I can't remember now. No, it must be, oh, beginners, here it is, beginners. Step one. So this is my, if you're an absolute beginner, I mean, this is a good video for you. If you know this stuff already, you really don't need to be listening to this video. I should have mentioned that at the beginning. But uh, anyway, here we are. And to get started as a beginner, use a text editor and such as Notepad. So I already kind of thought, planned out this, what I was going to do today. 
create an index.html folder and add this line. That's my suggested line. So I'm going to do it. I'm just going to follow my own instructions. Add that line to the file index.html and then open the file in a browser. Let's go ahead and do that. So there's the file. I'm going to save that. And uh, just close that out. And that's open it in a browser. Well, that's easy to do. It's already the icon there shows it's going to be open in uh, Chrome. And you see here's the URL to file. It doesn't say HTTP. It doesn't say HTTPS. The protocol, it's telling us, the browser's telling us that it's getting the web page from the file system of the local computer. And here's the path. Oh, there, that's the URL, file colon slash slash. See that? This is, this is similar to this. Watch, watch this. See, this is the, the protocol. HTTPS, that's the protocol name. And then you got a colon with two slashes. And then you have the host name. And then you have what's called uh, the resource identifier. This is the root folder. That'll be like, a, I'm just using the word folder. And then, uh, then under that is a subfolder and another subfolder. And then this here is the name of the resource within this uh, path path name. So this is a this is the resource name. This is the path name to the resource. This is the host name. This is a required sort of these three symbols is, or, or the delimiters that, that that separate the protocol name. Uh, from the uh, rest of it. And this is called a URL, a Uniform Resource Locator. This is how you identify objects on the internet. And also, apparently, you can also identify objects in your local file system. So, see, it's the same. There's the three colon slash slash. Those are the, the, uh, the delimiters. And the, the, uh, the protocol is file. That means file system, local file system. And then the path, the, the path to the resource starts with a slash, slash C colon slash. So that's, a, that's a path that's understood by the, you know, your local um, machine, your the operating system. So if we were on Mac, it wouldn't be C colon like that. They don't use uh, drive letters. They, use some, they would just use slash. We'd have three slashes, and then maybe it would be four slashes. I don't know. And, uh, and the rest, and the path from the top root folder down to uh, down to the resource. Now, this is the file. That's the resource name itself. And this is you would call this the the, the resource path name. Anyway, that's a long thing. And you can view the source code. Look at this, view page source. See that? There it is right there. That's the H1. Now, by the way, that's a first level header. And, um, and that, that's why it's bold like this. So what we can do is, um, let me get rid of this. What we can do is, uh, where is it here? We're going to edit this thing again. I should have closed that notepad. Hello world, and I would say uh, goodbye world. How's that? You know, that's a little depressing, isn't it? That's a sad way to end the class. Goodbye world. So I come to the browser, you notice it still says hello world. That's because it's, you know, already loaded the file and is rendering it. So you have to reload it. There it is, goodbye world. And then there's other content we can add, you know, like uh, you have, here's a paragraph and, uh, you know, I'm a paragraph, for instance, and save that. There we go. And then if I reload, there it is. I'm a paragraph. See the font? It's a lot smaller. This is an H1. It's a first level. 
And uh, so you, if you don't know HTML, then you got to do some research on it. You know, you just got to look it up, this HTML, and you start learning it. It's, it's not that hard. And uh, this is, um, you know, you just go through here. This is a very popular, over the years, this has been widely used for people to learn um, HTML or web development in general. Three, three, W3 schools. It's really very easy introduction. If you want something super easy and make something simple, this is a good place to go. But you got to deal with all these advertisements. Advertisements is just as heavily sprinkled with advertisements as you can see it, and um, and it it doesn't. It try to make the material as simple as possible, and it leaves out some some tougher sort of conceptual concepts, technical stuff that uh, make it tougher to digest things. So if it's your first pass through this, then this is a nice uh, resource. And uh, so there's an example. They just give an example there. And you'll see what, the, what does their example look like? Well, you just basically stick it in here, save it, and then... Uh, load it this is the heading this is the paragraph see it's very similar to my example look at that then they have this page title see there's a head this is the document type and you know this is everything's wedged inside this these tags it's an opening tag a closing tag in that you've got two sections you have a head section with an opening head tag a closing head tag and then you have a body section or body element, they call them elements, not sections. This is the head element. This head element is within the HTML element. That's the HTML element. This is the head element. It's the first child element of the HTML element. This is the second child. Body is the second child element of the HTML element. It's the sibling element to the head element. The body element itself has, to, in this example, has two sub-elements. There's the H1 element here. It's the paragraph elements. It's a technical word is element. These are elements. And an element is, there's um, the typical element. It has an opening tag. That's the opening tag for the header. And a closing tag. That's the closing tag to the header. In between the opening and closing tags, you have the content. So this content is just text. That creates what's called a text node in the... In the uh, document object, but I don't want to get into that. It's, that's where it's starting to get technical. That's where it doesn't talk about it over in that W3 schools. It doesn't go any deeper. It just gives you the simple stuff. And here's the body element. See, it has two sub elements in there. So that's, um, that's that. And um, we'll close that out. And uh, you'll see in the repository here, this is uh, my repository right there. I'll click on this again, okay. This is my code. By the way, there's a little wiki area in there. See, that's nice. And uh, that's where I put the syllabus for my stuff. And here's the file. There's only one file in there. We're going to add another file. So I'm going to do that from the command line. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. So here is, uh, if I do git, let me see. I hope this is people can read this. Let's see if I can increase the font size here. Let's see if I can increase the font size. How do I do that? Um, text 18 say. How's that? Maybe that's better. I want to make sure people can see it. And um, I will type in clear. There we go. PWD. Here I am. In, I'm in this folder. And you'll see that uh, LS. Once again, these are Linux commands. They run on the Mac. They run on Linux. And they only run on Windows when you uh, using something like this uh, git bash. Although maybe it's... Maybe the Linux, maybe the Windows shell now uses uh, 
supports LS. I, I don't. I can't remember. I tried using it recently, but I didn't get much benefit out of it, so I just stopped using that and just used the just generic uh, Unix style command line interface because it it works everywhere. And uh, so if I do git status, and it says I'm on the main branch, so in git you've got branches. And you're always in a one one or other branch. So we're in the main branch. It's called main. It used to be called master, by the way, and recently they changed it to main. And you can imagine why they changed it from the name master to the name main. Everybody, you'll see the old examples of people talking about the repositories all going to be in master branches. <laughs> yeah, the political correctness, it, it gets everywhere. So... Anyway, the, it says the branch is up to date with origin main. And, uh, and then it's alerting us to, we have an untracked file, and it's, it's in red there. Index.html says that's not tracked. So we're going to add it. It says to include, you know, use, use this. It says use git add a name of the file to include what will be committed. So let's do that. We're going to do git add... Uh, index.html, see that? So we added it to what's called the the index. And another word for index is the staging area. It's a temporary holding area that holds the changes that you want to uh, to write into. You want to commit. You want to commit a certain number of changes into your repository. So your what your repository is, it's got a collection of branches, and each branch has a sequence of commits. So now if I run git status again, it shows me that, um, that we have changes to be committed. And see this origin main? Your branch is up to date with origin main. Origin main, this is the name of the remote repository. It's the name of the remote repository is origin. And what we're it's saying that we have a branch called main and our main branch locally is the same as the main branch that we got from our origin, our remote repository. So the local main branch is the same as the remote uh, main branch or the main branch that we, we copied from because it the main branch the remote main branch may have been changed but the system's not going to know that now but it's referring here when it says it's, it's up to date it's referring here to the main branch from the remote that we cloned from now we got a, it says this is, this is staged, changes to be, it hasn't been committed yet, right? It says, well, we got a new file. There's a new file. That's something that's not in the repository. So I'm going to just do git uh, commit minus m for message. And I want to say, uh, you know, my first commit. I usually don't put a message. I usually put just x as a message. I, I don't usually use messages. So this is the, these commits have um, identifiers attached to them. They're hashes, they're very long strings. And this is just part of the identifier of this new commit. It's a, this commit, the real identifier is much longer. And it's saying that one file has changed and so on. And there we go. So if I run git status now, This is, I'm running git status now. We're on the main branch. Ah, your main branch is ahead of origin main by one commit. Now it knows that, oh, from the, the main branch that we had cloned is now out of sync with our local copy, our local clone. So it says here, use git push. Use git push to publish your local commits. All right, so let's do that. So once again, if you look up here, if I refresh the repository, it's just showing one file. 
But if I do get push, it is giving me all this information and you can read that and basically say, well, here's the old commit number and that's an abbreviation. And this is the new commit identifier. So this should be the old one, FBA. Let's see, do they even have that there? You see this FBA, that's the initial commit. And the new commit, it starts with F109 like that. So now watch, if I refresh this, there it is, that's the index. And you'll see here's the new commit, uh, 51, it should show 51, yeah, 5109, there it is, 5109. There's a, if you look down the bottom of the file, you see that down the bottom. I don't know if you could see that down down in this area. Look down in here, and I hover over that. That's the that's the full identifier for that commit. That's the name. It's a it's a identifier. It's a hash of the of the repository contents. So it's uh, statistically or prob probabilistically going to be unique. It's uh, near impossible to generate the same hash value for two different repositories. All right, that's it. And now it's just showing me readme, but I can select this index.html and it shows us the contents of that file. So that's it. Now in the syllabus, this is what we just did. Now the last thing you would do to complete this is you just have to remember that when you the next progress report you send to me is you just tell me say I finished the Git assignment and and then give me a link to the repository so that would be you know this is not a link to the repository if I go to here that's a link to the repository at the top level sometimes the students there they just they click on a file and they send me the Link to the file. You could do that too. If you want me to look at a specific file, you can do that. So you could send me this too if you like. Anyway, I'm not picky about it, but I I sound picky. All right. So um, that's it. That's the um, that's it. And I'm gonna. Is there anything else? It's sort of. Uh, there's other stuff I could say. Let's suppose you have another machine. Let's do that. I'm gonna exit this just to keep talking. <laughs> Sorry about that. And let's suppose that here's the here's the repo that we created, right? Look at that. And uh, this this is our local repo. We it's gone. Maybe we're on another machine, or we're working with a friend, or in a team. And the team is you send an email, and you send them this uh, this link here. And then you then they your team member grabs the the URL, and then on their machine. Let's do this. They open up Git Bash and LS. You'll see there is no CSE forty fifty. We deleted it, so you just you just clone it. So it's nice. It's a backup system, and uh, there it is. There it is, right there. Where did it go? There it is. Went in the top. So that's the uh, that's it right there. So that's it. I think I'm going to stop now. Good luck with the exercise. I need to stop this thing. You got to figure out how to stop it. I'm just new at this. There we go.